identity and monoids. Let S star be a semigroup. An element E of S is called an identity with respect to the binary operation star. If for all A and S, we have E star A equals A star E equals A. A monoid is a semigroup with an identity. Let's look at an example. Let S equal the set containing A and B and define star using the following multiplication table. We have already seen that S star is a commutative semigroup. We will now show that B is an identity with respect to star. Well, we have B star A equal to A, A star B equal to A, and B star B equal to B. Since S star is a commutative semigroup and B and S is an identity with respect to star, it follows that S star is a commutative monoid. Notice that the row corresponding to B is the same as the input row. Also, the column corresponding to B is the same as the input column. This is a nice visual way to use the table to recognize that an element is an identity. Let's look at another example. Let S equal the set consisting of A, B, and C and define star using the following multiplication table. Star is a binary operation on S because the only possible outputs are A and C, and both of these outputs are also inputs. Star is also associative in S because X star Y star Z is equal to C, and X star Y star Z is equal to C unless X, Y, and Z are all equal to A, in which case we have A star A star A is equal to A star A, which is A, and A star A star A is equal to A star A, which is A. Therefore, S star is a semigroup. Star is also commutative in S, as can be seen by looking at entries on opposite sides of the main diagonal. Therefore, S star is a commutative semigroup. However, S star is not a monoid, as there is no identity. To see this, simply observe that there is no row inside the table that matches the input row at the top of the table. In other words, there is no row inside the table of the form A, B, C. In fact, B does not appear inside the table at all. Let's try an exercise. Each of the following is the multiplication table for a semigroup. Determine if each of these semigroups is a monoid. Now's a good time to pause the video, try these problems yourself, and then resume the video to check your answers against mine. For the first one, the answer is no. A does not even appear as an output in the multiplication table. For the second one, the answer is yes. B is an identity. As we could see by noticing that the row corresponding to B matches the input row and the column corresponding to B matches the input column. Let's look at some more examples. The set of natural numbers with addition is a commutative monoid with identity zero. The set of integers together with addition is also a commutative monoid with identity zero. The set of natural numbers together with multiplication is a commutative monoid with identity one. And the set of integers together with multiplication is also a commutative monoid with identity one. As another example, 2z, the set of even integers 
together with the operation of addition is also a commutative monoid with identity zero. As one more example, let A be a non-empty set. Recall that the power set of A is the set of B such that B is a subset of A. In other words, the power set of A consists of all subsets of A. And if X and Y are in the power set of A, then X union Y is equal to the set of X such that X is in X or X is in Y. Let's check that the power set of A together with the operation of union is a commutative monoid. If X and Y are in the power set of A, then every element of X is in A and every element of Y is in A. It follows that every element of X union Y is in A. So X union Y is in the power set of A. This shows that union is a binary operation on the power set of A. We have already seen that union is associative and commutative in power set of A. Finally, the empty set is an identity for the power set of A together with the operation of union, because if X is in the power set of A, then X union empty is equal to X and empty union X is equal to X. It follows that the power set of A together with the operation of union is a commutative monoid. Let's try an exercise. Determine if each of the following is a monoid. If it is not a monoid, is it a semigroup? Is it commutative? Okay, once again, now's a good time to pause the video, try this exercise yourself, and then resume the video to check your answers against mine. The first one, 2n, the set of even natural numbers together with the operation of addition. This is a commutative monoid with identity zero. Second one, n star, where a star b is equal to a, we have already seen that n star is a non-commutative semigroup. n star is not a monoid. If we take any a, then we have a star a plus one is equal to a, which is not equal to a plus one. So a is not an identity. You may wanna pause the video again here and look this over carefully. Uh, many students find this argument a bit confusing until they look over it very, very carefully. For the third one, Z star, where A star B is min AB, we have already seen that Z star is a commutative semigroup. Z star is not a monoid by the same reasoning as in number two. 2z times is a commutative semigroup. We've already seen that. But it's not a monoid. The identity element of z together with multiplication is one, and this element is missing from the set of even integers together with multiplication. The power set of A together with the operation of intersection, where A is a non-empty set, this is a commutative monoid with identity A. Let's check the properties carefully. Closure. If X and Y are in the power set of A, then every element of X is in A. Since every element of the intersection of X and Y is an element of X, it follows that every element of the intersection of X and Y is in A. So the intersection of X and Y is in the power set of A. Associativity and commutativity. These have been established previously. Identity. A is an identity for the power set of A together with the operation of intersection, because if X is in the power set of A, then X intersect A is equal to X, and A intersect X is equal to X. By definition, every monoid has at least one identity. It is natural to ask if a monoid can have more than one identity. We will now discuss why this cannot happen. Monoid fact one. In any monoid, M star, the identity is unique. Analysis. 
There is a standard way to show that an object satisfying a certain property or properties is unique. You begin by assuming that you have two such objects, not necessarily distinct, and then you argue that they must be the same. Assume that E and F are both identities. For any A and M we have, well, we have E star A equals A and A star E equals A because E is an identity and F star A equals A and A star F equals A because F is an identity. In particular, substituting F in for A in the top two equations, we have E star F equals F and F star e equals F. And substituting E in for A in the bottom two equations, we have F star E equals E and E star F equals E. If we take the upper right and the lower left equations, we see that we have F star E equal to F and F star E also equal to E. So E and F must also be equal because they're both equal to the same thing. We could have also used the top left and bottom right equations to come to the same conclusion. Let's finish up with one more exercise. Let M star be a monoid and suppose that E and F are not necessarily distinct identities of M. Explain why E star F is equal to F and explain why E star F is equal to E. Now's a good time to pause the video, answer this question, and then resume the video to check your answer against mine. Okay, so why is E star F equal to F? Because E is an identity. And why is E star F equal to E? Because F is an identity.